Now, whether you want to attract your soulmate, land the perfect job or find the home you've always wanted, our next guest says she has the answer. Teresa Chung claims you can achieve all your New Year goals by manifesting them into reality. Uh, and she joins us now. Good morning. Good morning. I'm, I manifested being here. Did so you really? I'm delighted. <laughs> Have you always wanted to be on this morning and you're on all the time? Yes. Yeah, exactly. But it took decades. So explain manifesting. Man took decades. <laughs> <laughs> no, it took decades for me personally. For you yeah. know, the self-belief required, because manifesting really is very similar to having belief in yourself, belief that you are worthy. Yeah. And that, like many of us, is a journey. It's a, it's a process through your life. But manifesting, put simply, is give more energy to your dreams your goals, what you want out of life, than your fears and what you lack. It's that simple. Change the focus to what you want, not what you don't want. Many of us operate on a scarcity mindset. We focus on all our problems and our issues. And what happens then is the brain goes out into the environment and finds proof of that lack for us. However, we can make the conscious choice to focus on what we have to be grateful for and what we want to become, your brain then, after a while, it takes time. It's not an overnight thing. You know, you don't plant a seed and expect it to grow overnight. It's the same with your thoughts and your brain. Your bra you will then go out into your environment and start looking for evidence of what you're thinking and feeling about yourself. So that competition, right, just there, 36 grand on a holiday of a lifetime. Do I, ma do I sit at home and go, I want to win that, I'm going to manifest winning it, or is it not about things like that? That's a big misconception about manifesting, and I'm so glad I'm here to put it straight. If you are in the mindset that you think winning a lot of money, being in the perfect relationship, having the perfect career, having the perfect figure, being hugely popular is going to make you happy, what you're doing then is giving your power to these things. And what manifesting is about is that regardless of whether you get these things, you feel great. Your inner wealth is so good that it doesn't matter. It's icing on the cake. And when you have that relaxed attitude to it, somehow it's like magic. Life tends to give it to you, but you have to get to the stage when the relationship with yourself is so strong that you know that you can cope with any negative comments. You can cope with failure and disappointment because you learn from it. You understand that life is lessons or blessings, and that's where you get to. It takes time. There's some techniques that can help you get there. But it really is wonderful. It really is when you finally get it. You know, I've been writing for years and years about dreams, about personal and spiritual growth, but it was all theory, really. I knew all the techniques, and they made sense, but it was only when I started working with scientists, researching it deeply, getting case histories, and then applying it to myself, actually walking the talk. So, what, talking of walking the talk, uh, what techniques can we use to manifest? Well, it's not just goals, is it? It's, it's yeah. manifesting your self-love, really. Well, it is, because if you're not happy right here, right now, why do you think you're going to be happy a week from tomorrow or when you get the job or when you get the, the popularity, the money? You know, for evidence of that, just look in the world at so many rich, successful, beautiful people who are miserable. So it's already out there. The universe is telling us these things do not make us happy. It's a mirage. They are helpful for our life's journey. They give us experience and we learn from them. But if you think all that's going to make you happy, you won't be. It starts right here, right now with a simple choice. And I'd ask all this morning viewers now to say, do you want to be happy or do you want to be sad? Do you want to be empowered or feel like a victim? Make that choice now. And the moment you make that choice, of course you want to feel happy and empowered. You are already aligning yourself with the version of yourself that you are destined to be. The future is always pulling you to be that person. You talk about the first 10 minutes of the day yes. being some of the most important. What should we all do in that first 10 minutes of the day? Well, the reason why it's so important is our brain is very impressionable then. It's, it's like a childlike state where the messages that we give it sort of get ingrained. So as soon as you wake up, and that paranoia comes in or negativity, and it's likely to do so because we may be hardwired to feel paranoid when we grow up, because in ancient times, actually, it was quite good news to wake up feeling paranoid because you could be beat, eaten by a tiger or whatever, but we've evolved beyond that. We now have conscious choice, right? Yeah. That's the wonderful thing about human being. We can choose our thoughts and feelings. So what I'd like to ask people to do is for the first 10 minutes of the day, leave all the worry for later. You can go back and worry then. But those first 10 minutes when your brain is so impressionable, just tell yourself you are worthy. Think about what you have to be grateful for. Well, waking up is something to be grateful for in itself. 
So start focusing on that, just for those 10 minutes. And then when you get out of bed, do an enormous stretch. Be expansive. Many of us in the morning, we, we huddle. Be expansive, right. be big. In, and also, stay away from your phone for at least the first half an hour, because if you go straight on your phone, the message you send out is everybody else's needs. Everything that's going on is more important than this relationship with myself. Okay. That is key. It's the most important relationship of your life. You are born alone and you die alone. You've got to get that right. When you get that relationship right, that you know that you are enough, that whatever happens to you, you're going to be OK. You've got your own back. Lovely. Life becomes much easier. And how can we make sure those goals stay on track? Well, every day I would like you to be aware of your tomorrow self watching you today. Because research shows there's something about the observer role. When we feel we're being observed, we tend to perform a bit better. So why not think about your tomorrow self watching you today? Record a message for your tomorrow self on your phone. It can just be a sentence saying, you're amazing, you're gonna, you, you know, your good things are coming your way, and then listen to that message the next day. So you get this idea of your future self, which is out there, always looking back at you and pulling you forward to a better, happier life. And this has been trialled in prisons and hospitals to help people get out of a real low. It works. It's such a simple technique, right. recording messages for your future self. And that's not like day. some nonky old Instagram thing. This is no, 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 no. I, I do work with scientists and psychiatrists and psychologists. I've made that my mission yep. to try and take the woo out of woo woo a bit. Yep. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, We're going to do that tonight. Let's do it. Let's what? record a message for ourselves for tomorrow. Right, okay. What you do is you get an idea of yourself across time because we can always go back in time and revisit our past self as well and give ourselves an invisible hug. And it's quite reassuring. It's like, you know, whether you believe in angels or whatever, you've got a guardian angel, it's you, your future yep. self, your long body over time in certain oh, cultures. i definitely got an angel. I really, <laughs> I know you. it. I just know it. <laughs> it's your future self who knows that you deserve everything good. We are, feeling happy is our birthright, right? Our inner psychic, our inner being knows that. Our ego needs to get on board with it. Our reason and our logic, which squashes it and is always criticizing and belittling us. Now, some people have an easier time getting rid of the negative talk yeah. because of the environment they were brought up in. But what you've got to realize is that if you are having a challenging time and you're feeling negative, you are learning and growing so much. Brilliant. Yeah. And as so, long as you're learning and growing... So self-love. You're, you're Se finding meaning. Yeah, self-love yes. is the... It centres around that. Love yourself and put that out into the ether. Believe in yourself. Believe in believe, yourself. Okay. If you can't believe in your current situation that things are going to go right, believe in the future. Fully expect that you are going to live the life of your dreams. You don't go to bed at night worrying if the sun's going to go up. You've got to have that certainty. Yeah, sure. No, right? That's fantastic. Lovely. That is absolutely <laughs> yeah. lovely. Thank lovely you so advice. Much, I love yeah. that. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely.